Alasan Ado Dogwa is my name once again. Uh, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I represent the people of Dogwa to do Wada federal constituency. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm from Kano State. Uh, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I believe you may all recall that on the 8th of October, Thursday precisely, Mr. President and Commander in Chief of the Federal Republic of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria was on this floor in exercise of his constitutional responsibility to lay an estimate, budget estimate for the year 2021 to this Honorable House, uh, and more specifically to the joint session of the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I would like members to recall that same time, about, about same time the preceding year, Mr. President was also here when he presented a budget that he titled a budget for sustaining growth and job creation. Mr. Speaker, I would like to, by, on this note, remind honorable members that while we had a lot of challenges in the course of the implementation of the 2020 budget, as it were, uh, most especially when we faced a lot of issues, challenges to do with the implementability of the budget, issues to do with economic challenges also glo globally. The pandemic we experienced, which is still ravaging the globe, the COVID-19 pandemic, it made it quite difficult for the government to really have it so easy with the then 2020 Budget uh, 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 Appropriation Act. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we recall that this National Assembly has to have a cause to now revise the budget itself as presented by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And most of the parameters that we looked at during the revision of that budget, honorable members, uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Speaker, were issues that were directly bordering on some of the impossibility of the achievements and implementation of the budget 2020 based on the projected parameters of the 2020 budget, Mr. Speaker. You, call, you can all recall that a lot of engagements with the National Assembly has been sustained, and at the end of the day, we are able to arrive at a midway where we had to cut so much of the capital expenditure itself. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I stand before you out of respect to tell you that despite those challenges, the government was able to perform approximately 50 to 60 percent in all capital provisions of the budget 2020. In some of the other special provisions, like the ZIP, and other special intervention, the government had performed extra ahead of 60, 50 to 60 percent. And I believe by the presentation of His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, last Thursday, he has given us further commitment that government is also looking forward to making further releases to continue to fund 2020 budget uh, as it is uh, between now to the end of this appropriation year, which will be 31st December 2020. It is on this basis, Your Excellency, Honorable Members, that the, budget, the government now decided to tag this current budget as a budget, a budget for economic recovery and re economic re 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 resilience. The word re resilience, I believe, was carefully chosen because government is all out to now deliberately fight against those factors that really militated against the implementation of the 2020 budget as it were, issues to do with the pandemic, the, 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 the falling price of, do, of, of oil in the global market, the challenges we had in the production of crude internally, these are factors that really militated against the implementation of the 2020 budget. And for that reason, government has come out with all commitment, with all uh, sense of responsibility to make sure that these challenges will be robustly addressed and engaged. And you can all believe with me that in the parameters, parameters presented or laid before us that will now lead the processes of the 2020, 2021 Appropriation Act have been put at a relatively conservative rate so that no challenge, economic or otherwise, will be forced against the implementation of this budget that is tagged to be a budget of economic recovery and resilience. Your Excellency, the Speaker, Honorable Members, you recall the President made it clear that we have tagged we have tagged the price of oil, the crude oil, at the global market at $40 per barrel. Our production, 
expectation or estimate will be 1.81 million per day. The exchange rate of Naira, Naira dollar to Naira will be 379 Naira to American US dollars. Uh, Your Excellency, I want to believe, you can also believe with me, these are projections that you can ordinarily con conceive to be conservative. They are not meant to be conservative because we want to be conservative. No, they are meant to be conservative because we have been advised, the government has been advised that we need to be conservative so that we will ultimately achieve and meet these expectations. Uh, Your Excellency, the Speaker, Honorable Members, I would like to, on this note, urge Honorable Members to look at this budget as a budget of general renewance, general rehabilitation, a budget that has a lot of interest to really improve on our infrastructure, improve on education, improve on agriculture, and above all, the budget has that commitment to also provide security of lives and property of Nigerian people, especially in the current situation that we are facing a lot of issues to do with security. If you look at the provision of the budget as it is to the Nigeria Police Force, which is one of the key and critical institutions, is amounting to about 441 billion naira, which is quite unprecedented in the recent time. The amount of money provided for internal security under the Ministry of Interior is also rating about 227 billion naira. Your Excellency, if you look at the provision meant for the Ministry of Defense, the amount provided for them, I think, is, about, is, is, is also significant enough that I believe government has expected commitment, has also exhibited a lot of concern over the security of lives and, and, and uh, security of lives and property of the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The ball, Your Excellency, Mr., uh, my colleagues, honorable members, is now in our court. The government has done its own part. And we will continue to say the truth that the budget when laid before the honorable, honorable House is only but a proposal. It is only but an estimate. And I believe with the commitment we have to serve Nigerian people, with the commitment we have to really exercise our constitutional responsibility, members of this Honorable House will see reason to align with Mr. President, to see that this, passage, this budget has been given a very speedy passage. Remember, we have, also, we have also made it huru when we made a commitment in the last budget that we will change the cycle from, December, from January to December cycle. Like the Speaker has said clearly on his, in his remarks, we have succeeded in doing that. I want to urge honorable members to look at all these parameters, look at all these concerns that we need to work as a team. The legislature and the executive arm of government are all components of one government. A failure on the other side will amount to a failure on this side as well. I, I believe when we join hands together, especially in the light of recent efforts by government to come close to the legislature, to come and work in partnership with us, their commitment to now have a complete sense of relationship with this arm of government that represents the interests of the Nigerian people. I think the ball is in our own, is in our own court, and I, believe, I plead with honorable members to accept this, this presentation of the 2021 budget in good faith for the overall interest of our people. And when we do that, I believe we will continue to deliver the expected dividend of democracy. Your Excellency, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I would like to, on behalf of the government of the Federation, thank this institution for the kind of cooperation and support they have extended so far to the government of President Muhammadu Buhari. And I would like to urge you to give this budget estimate and pro proposals a similar engagement, a similar consideration, so that we can speedily pass it and allow the government to commence the business of governance so that some of these economic challenges, both at micro and macro level of our economic platforms, can be finally addressed. Mr. Speaker, uh, honorable members, I thank you for this time. And I plead with members to also look at this budget from the same point of view that I look at it as the ambassador of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on this green chamber. Thank you and God bless the Federal Republic.